Nice. <laughs> All right. Snatch size trucker back in the building. What's going on? How you feel? Been good. I've been good. I've been busy. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I see, I see. We, we, we about to talk about that. But what you, uh, what you been into since the last time we talked? This is, uh, it's been a minute. Lots of, lots of changes for you. So what's, what's going on? Oh my god! You know nothing. It's just like I say, it's been a year of transformations. Like I moved from Georgia up to Chicago. Um. I think the last time I talked to you, I was with Prime or JB Hunt. I can't remember. <laughs> uh, you was. I can't remember which you, one. You was with one of those two guys. Go back into the archives and check out Snatch Styles <laughs> Truckers. Uh, at that time, interview, but right now we're having a a conversation. So, you moved from Georgia. I was, you know, I was about to ask you because I had I'm on my way to Georgia right now, so. Uh, I was about to ask you, why is some of the finest females is out of Georgia? Finest trucker females out of Georgia. What, I mean, what's you up? know, we, we are the home of the features, you know what I'm saying? You know, we got that we got that sweetness to us. <laughs> then, you know, we cornbread fed down there, so you know, you, we sticking all the right places. Was you was you born in <laughs> was you born and raised down there or or, or you was just living down there? Nope, born and raised in Georgia. Okay. I'm a peach. Okay, okay. So born and raised, you got your job, you truck driving, you 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 Georgia Fred. What <laughs> what brought you up to Chicago? What's Chicago of all places? What we we working for I mean, we working we driving for the Russians now? What what's up? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. Not to say there's anything wrong with it. It's just, you know, I, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Um, no, I'm with, right now, I just I just left J.B. Hunt about maybe two weeks ago. Um, doing the intermodal thing. I'm doing flatbed again with Cardinal Logistics uh, right now. But I, I, I initially moved up here because, first of all, you know, I came from a very small town in Georgia. So the money was limited and, you know, there wasn't a lot of freight coming in, coming out of where I was in, in Georgia and I wasn't going to move to Atlanta. I just didn't want to do that. So, you know, Chicago had the money. They had to offer. So I, I came up here and took it. All right. All <laughs> right. You, you, do you got kids? Uh, are, are, didn't you tell me you was married? What, what, what's your, what's no, your family? No, no, I'm, like? very, I'm very, I'm very much single. So, Hey, y'all <laughs> um, I'm very hey. much single <laughs> but I do have two I have two boys I have two little big boys alright yeah. so so with all that said uh, about uh, being down in Georgia you, you feel that you you wasn't going to be successful down there that's that's why you took that. that's why you took your talents to the Midwest yeah yeah because you know not not in the way, I'm not going to say that I wasn't going to be successful. It's just not in the way that I wanted to be successful. Like I, like I said, born and raised in Georgia, I was very comfortable in Georgia. So I knew if I stayed in Georgia, I probably wasn't going to go as far as I am now because like it's the wages, the cost of living, everything is lower. You can get more for your money down there. So it's like I don't have to do much to live comfortable, but I wanted to, I wanted to supersede that. I wanted to do bigger things. And experience bigger things for my kids, so I I had to take that move. I had to, you know, I had to move up a little bit. I don't know though, Chicago. Mmm, man, Chicago. I I don't know. <laughs> Chicago's dangerous. Like, I mean, Chicago yeah. is is is, yeah. one, is like in the top. It's in the top percent of 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 like bad cities to live in, especially on the south side, like. I mean, what was ah? You know what? You know what? What I learned about that since I've been here, everything that you hear about Chicago is true. But in the same respect, just like anywhere else in the world, if you go and you mind your business, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You mind your business, you stay in your lane, you do what you got to do. You don't have nothing to worry about here. And I live on the south side, so that should tell you something. <laughs> I haven't had an issue since I've been here. I haven't had an issue since I've been here. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Now, was you was still <laughs> was you was still with JB Hunt 
when when you made the move to Chicago or you was in you, yes. you was in oh okay so you just went on here and told like JB Hunt listen I'm I'm moving up to Chicago here's my new address and they was good with that no 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 JB Hunt was very instrumental on my move they were the reason why I moved um I did I, I brought um uh, I mentioned that I wanted to move up here and the uh transfer team was on it they was like helping me find positions, positions not just, you know, that were available, but, like, positions that fit what I wanted to do, my hours, the pay that I wanted to make, all of that. And then um, when I came up here to actually look for a place to stay, they gave me a load coming from the South going up there, to, up here to Chicago. So, J.B. Hunt was very helpful in helping me move. Then, then if, they was, <laughs> if they was instrumental and, and helpful and everything, why, why, why you leave? Like, the fuck? Because, because I was making, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very candid with you. I was making 65k a year, at JB Hunt. I just got offered a job making 100k. You think I was gonna stay? I yeah, I I hear you, I hear you. So, snatch size <laughs> trucker, four nine, four nine truck driver, doing flatbed. <laughs> what what is? What is that picture like when when you out there doing uh doing the flatbed work? What's what 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 kind of what what kind of looks you get out there, man? I mean, you like you like a buck fifty four four nine. What's up? Exactly the way you think it is. It's very comical. It's <laughs> it's especially when I'm throwing the straps. I have so many truck drivers that will sit there and just watch me throw straps. Because depending on how high my load is, it depends on how goofy I look throwing the strap. Because I have to, like, I have to take the strap and then run all the way backwards and throw it like a quarterback. <laughs> so let me ask you this: uh, now, I, now, you know, we, you know, we vibing and everything, and we saying that it's comical and all like that. But on the real, do do some of the do some of the guys because I. You know, I, I follow TikTok, not a fan of it, but I do follow it and I meet interesting people on there. But there is this one TikToker that that literally says that uh men of our skin don't don't help don't don't help the uh don't help the young ladies. Now it's not like you don't need the help, but I mean, uh -huh. do they do do they come up to 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 offer the help? Oh, yes. I've, I haven't had the experience of them not helping. I've actually had them try to help me before I actually needed the help. <laughs> yeah, I've I've never, I've had great experiences with men. I, but also I had the flip side of that coin where, you know, you have the, the men that are looking at me crazy because it's a man's world and how dare I, a woman, come and try to do this. So, you know, I have, I've had that. But when it comes to the men of our skin color, I've had no problem we're getting help from them. All right, let's 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 be honest. Let's let's be honest. Uh, snatch size. Oh, we, here we, we go. Let, let's be honest. Here we go. We <laughs> we, we out there. We we're a female. We we're a female flat better that's out there doing a the damn thing and all like that. Let's be honest. You 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 out there. You you out there with the with the with the booty shorts and the TikToks and all like that going on. Oh, or are, no, or, or baby. are you or are you the worker? getting it done let me tell you something <laughs> when I'm, I'm, I'm gonna actually i'm gonna actually start recording myself while i'm out there when i'm at work i look like and i'm sorry for anybody and i don't mean this offensively please please me but i look like a whole dyke when i'm at work i'm talking about hair in a ponytail big big behind sweatpants big t-shirt like I'm, I'm at work trying to be comfortable and i'm sorry like Wearing tight clothes, and no offense to people who do this, but wearing tight clothes and stuff like that is not comfortable to me. So, like, I'm, I'm here to be comfortable. So I look like a little boy. I say, I say all the time, I look like a little boy when I'm at work because I'm out here working for real. And and I barely, and the reason why I don't post a lot of videos is because I am working for real. I barely have time to remember to set the camera up and do, you know, do videos. <laughs> All right. So what what made you, what, you know, I, is it, no, no, I, I think you made a few TikToks, but you much more heavy on Instagram than anything, right? Yeah, I mean, no, I would say I'm more active on TikTok because I'm goofy and TikTok is just like a goofy platform for me. 
um, I have a bigger presence on Instagram, I, I think, because the men see Snack Class Trucker and they, they find it interesting that I am a very small woman doing this trucking thing. So <laughs> I, get a, I get a lot of male followers um, daily. And they're, you know what, they are some of my biggest supporters because, like, I get into my mood um, and I'll post a video and things like that. And they're the ones in my DM and my comments, like, encouraging me to keep moving forward. So I appreciate them a lot. But I have a bigger presence on Instagram, like a more um, engaging audience on Instagram. Okay, okay. Wait, you mean TikTok or Instagram with the engaging audience? Oh, it's... I, I have more of an engaging audience on Instagram. TikTok, okay. people look at my videos, but they don't really say a lot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. All right, so you, uh, you, 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 you changing it up. So you with Cardinal Logistics, a uh, nice uh -huh. company. I, I believe I, I, I chatted with them uh, a while back. I got to probably yeah. do a follow up with them. But uh, what you know, flatbed though. Like, I mean, you came from intermodal. That's like that's like work a little bit, right? I uh -huh. mean, you you agree? <laughs> but that's very light work. That's light work. <laughs> but what 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 made you what made you get into uh flatbedding? Well, actually, when I first moved to Chicago, I was with flat. I was doing a flatbed position um uh, with the Office Depot account with JB Hunt. Um, so I've done flatbed before, so that's, and, but when I did that, I was, uh, doing, I was strapping and I had the kind of soga, you know, the, the part that's built into the flatbed, that slide. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that and I was carrying like steel and, um, PCP pipes. So PVC, uh, PVC, whatever they call them, the big P pipes PCP or whatever. PCP pipe. I was... <laughs> Yeah, I said it right the first time, but I don't know why I thought I was saying, like, the pill or some drugs or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> so. but, um, but, yeah, I was carrying that and everything with um, with J.B. Hunt. So I was, I kind of got, I got the feel of it and everything, and I was like, oh, I can do it. So when um, Cardinal came around and they were offering this position, which I actually um, have a Moffitt attached to my trailer. So... I'm unloading it with the forklift. Okay, so, so you doing so you doing never... so you doing work work like work yeah. work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, go I ahead. Had previous before go. before I became a truck driver, I was a forklift driver. So like this was something that I would I I had knew how to do. Go ahead with your little bad self, man. Damn. <laughs> I, I mean what I mean what's up with the, what what's Snatch size trucker. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be honest with you, man. You you're a hard worker out here. You you you're a family woman. You take care. Of, you you take care of your family and you get your grind down. Why is this all? Why is it? Why why are you single? Like, I mean, you're every oh man's God. you're every man's dream right now. But you know what? That's the same thing that um. Well, that's just to answer that question. I believe, because I don't know. You have to ask the men that I dated. Maybe, because, you know, I never dated myself, so I don't know what the issue is. But <laughs> but um, I think people say they want a certain type of person, and then when they actually get that type of person, it's not what they really want. So, um, and, I'm, and I'm saying that from experience, because I've actually gotten the person that I said that I wanted, and it turned out that maybe I didn't want what I thought I did. <laughs> so so I, think, I think that's what it is. So you got you got two kids. What's what's the age? Eleven and four. All right. So the eleven year by the same dad? No, unfortunately not. It didn't work out that way for me. So with the four year old boy or girl? Boy, both boys. Okay. So with the four year old, what happened with that relationship? I'll just say he was a huge mama's boy and it got in the way severely, like to the point where the mom was trying to basically replace her now grown son with my baby. Like she was trying to like make him a carbon copy and we just, we just couldn't, it wasn't going to work for me. 
Oh, okay. Like when, when it, I feel like once it gets to the point where I physically want to put hands on your mom or your sister, then we got to separate because that's that's crossing the line. Nobody should have to cross. Oh my God! So let me ask you this question: So if if he if he was to pull up to pick up you and and his moms, who would get the front seat? You or his moms? Oh, his mama can have a whole car because I'm not getting in. <laughs> like, I, 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 can pull, I, can, I can drive myself wherever I need to go. We just meet me wherever we going. <laughs> oh, man. So, so let me ask you this. Uh, you, you know, in the, in the beginning when, you know, when you came back in, into the building with me, uh, you did say you, you are single. So are you open to, are you open to, uh dating truckers or or you don't want to date a trucker what, what what are you what are you open to to dating honestly i think a trucker would fit my lifestyle right now because we both are doing the same thing so we both understand you know what we're going through and things like that as far as work and then we since we're both driving you know, we get that time to miss each other. Like, we're not always a funny each other. You don't need to see me all the time. I don't need to see you all the time. I think the bond to be, uh, the bond would be there because we both have an understanding at that point. All right. Like we're, we're trying to get to the money, you know, together. <laughs> all right. So let's say, let, let's say y'all, you know, kind of like came together, maybe hypothetically, say about a year or something like that. Would you be willing to team drive with, uh, with, with uh with boo you i think that would be a conversation that we possibly could have right now i would say no because i believe if the bond isn't there and you guys haven't stood the test of time being team driving with your significant other will drive y'all crazy and y'all will not like each other Exactly. <laughs> all right so i i see you I, I see you moving a little bit in the realm of is it dispatching or brokering? Which which one? Uh, dispatching for now. Brokering is definitely where I'm headed to. But right now, I'm starting off in the dispatching area. Okay, so let me ask you this, Ness Size. I mean, you're you're a flatbedder. You out there grinding. How in the hell did you have in time for for dispatching other other trucks? And how <laughs> is that like? You didn't you tell me that you got your own authority? No, 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 no. I don't have my own authority. Okay. That wasn't me. Okay, so how are you dispatching? How 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 do that work? Okay, so um, when I started my dispatching company, I was actually home for I think it was like a good month or so, and um, due to health reasons at the time, I had to have a surgery. Um, so I started it because I'm I'm the type of person I cannot not work. So. Um, I started my dispatching company to help a friend out. He has about four or five trucks in Mississippi that he needed moved. So I was home. I had time, so I started it. And then I realized I liked it. I was good at it. And being a truck driver gave me an edge because I understood what they were going through on the road, and it helped me plan their loads better. So I was like, okay, I want to continue doing that. So when I went back to work, I mean, I was I work at night. So... During the day, I was dispatching. Like, and then when I went to work at night, I get off, I go to sleep, take my son to school, all that stuff right there. But I would get up early and then dispatch because I had already pre-planned the loads out. So basically, I just got up early in the morning to make sure my driver was on track, the loads was um, secure and ready, and all of the, the formalities they needed. And then they would send me text messages throughout the, uh, the day with updates. And that's only if they wanted to. A lot of the drivers was okay with that. Sending me text uh, text messages throughout the day saying, hey, traffic backed up, or hey, I got a, a blowout, or hey, I'm two hours away from the um, location. So it works out. It's just, I mean, I just have to be intentional about my schedule. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm losing my words right now. <laughs> Take your time. Take I make your time. my, I bet. What was the last thing you heard me say? <laughs> I, you you were saying that they were sending you text messages to let you know that everything is going throughout the day. Yeah, they would send me updates throughout the day to let me know everything was okay. 
And if I needed to, um, and then I was caught, I was in constant contact with the brokers because, like I said, I work at night, so I would dispatch throughout the day. And then now that I'm with Cardinal, whatever, so it's like I basically bend my work schedule around everything else that I have to do. Give, so give it works out. Give me an example, uh, or give give me an example of when. One of your one one of your uh, truck driver clients call you up. Give give me an example from start to finish of how you get them okay, dispatch. So, okay, so I have this one guy, and he'll basically hit me up. Usually, he'll hit me up like Friday evening or Saturday and say, "Hey, you know, I want to leave out on Monday, and I want to go to Indiana." And I'm not coming back home until seven, eight days later, and I want to make this for money. So then I asked him, okay, do you have a preference in what you want to haul? Because he has multiple, he owns his own uh, trailers and tra- tractors and all of that. So he has, like, dry van reefers and flatbeds. So I'm like, okay, so what equipment do you want to carry? Like, what do, what do you want to do? And then he basically tells me all of that. So what I do from that point on is I get on the phone with my brokers that I'm in contact with and be like, hey, I have this driver in Mississippi. You know, do you have anything for me headed to Indiana? And they say yes or no, and then I book that load. But he has a minimum as well. He has a minimum where he doesn't want to move his truck for less than $3.50 a mile. So I find it. And then nine times out of 10, I try to negotiate the rate. So if they're offering 25 for something, I try to negotiate it to at least 27 28 a lot of times I get those extra, the extra money. Sometimes I don't. Some people are firm, but that's pretty much what I do. I just call my brokers and then I just pack the loads on up until that date that he says he wants to go back home. So basically I'll pull a round trip of loads. And then right before I finalize everything, I send him my plan. And I'm like, hey, does this work for you? And he tells me yes or no, or he tells me which loads he wants to change out. And then we work from there. Now, I basically, I work for the I work for the driver, so it's like whatever you say. <laughs> now, now let me ask you this: Now, how how is how is the pay for for you? Because you know the broker got to make some money, you got to make some uh, money, and the driver got to uh, make some money. The driver is not going to move his truck for nothing less than three dollar a mile or two dollar a mile or whatever, uh, whatever. The broker got to the broker got to make his money from you know with the the contract that he he gets with all the distribution and all like that and you being the dispatcher, how do you uh, make your money? You 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 make your money from direct payment from the driver or do you make your money from direct payment from the broker? No, I make all my money directly from the uh, the driver because I'm the dry the driver is. Uh, hiring me, so to speak. So, like, they, they're contracting me out to find their load. So I get a percentage of their load. Or some some dispatchers um, do a flat rate. But me, personally, I do a percentage of the load. So I get a percentage of every load that I book for them. And then once they're done and it goes back and everybody's paid out, like the factoring company pays you out because a lot of my drivers do factoring companies. So when the factoring company pays out, it directly deposits into my account. <laughs> for every load that I've, you know, booked for them. Okay. Because okay. we sign, I have my driver sign contracts as well. So, yeah, I get my money. <laughs> so how how is that? Uh, how is that? Con- how uh, like? I mean, you don't have to give me you you don't have to give me like specifics, but just give me a ballpark of of what a dispatcher makes? Well, I mean, I can't really say because a lot of dispatchers make a whole lot of money. I'm just starting out and I don't have that many trucks. Um, so I think the most I've made in a week is about, a, I think it was like 1500 Okay. And okay. that was before, that was, that was before gas prices and the rate dropped. That was way before. Now I'm averaging because my trucks aren't moving as much. Um, I'm averaging maybe six fifty, eight hundred. That's still good considering, right? It is. 
I mean, it's it's still you know it's still extra income outside of you know what I do. So yeah, it's real. It's still good for me. Okay. But I know there's people out there still making that fifteen hundred a week, but they've also been doing this for a long time. <laughs> okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Snack size trucker. Man, okay, I, I, wow. I mean, you, you, you are a dra- uh, ugh. you are a jack of all trades right now. Like, let's be honest. Thank how you. do you, how do you have the time? Like, for real, for real. I, I mean, don't. even, even if, even if somebody do show, uh, shows interest in you, how do you have the mm-hmm. time? I tell people, I tell this to um to everybody. All the time. My only day off is Sunday. So if you want me, catch me on Sunday. <laughs> wow. Okay, guys, y'all hear that? That's a uh, snack size <laughs> trucker on a Sunday. If you wanna, if you wanna chat and talk to her, <laughs> snack size trucker. How can they find you on uh, on your sis, uh, on your social media? Um, you can find me on Instagram at snack size trucker. You can find me on TikTok as Mommy Mobile, but I will say, don't judge me on TikTok. <laughs> you say don't judge. You say don't um, judge. You judge your mama, huh? Right, judge your mama. <laughs> but um, you can find me on, like I said, TikTok at Mommy Mobile. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Snack Size Trucker, and um, I will give y'all my Facebook, but that's. That's that's gonna be a lot. Nah, you, 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 you don't have to give out. You, you you don't have to give out the yeah. the Facebook. You don't have to do that. Yeah, All but right. those two, those mm-hmm. two I'm active on. All right, everybody, that is what's up. Snack size trucker in the building, back again, friend of the show. Thank you very much. You guys know that the best conversation starts here on the lockout man podcast show yo let's go ahead and uh connect and conversate if you guys want to meet and greet with the lockout man y'all can do that y'all can hit me up to one six six zero zero two zero nine zero let's get in it snatch size trucker thank you very much for coming on and hollering at your boy i really do appreciate it thank you hello yeah yeah there you go (laughs) I say thank you. I appreciate you coming in. No problem. Thank you. All right. All right. Until next time, everybody, y'all take it easy. Peace. I'm like Beethoven with the bass on it. Me, class kids, it went pop. Death to the hater won't stop. Let's talk key scales, it won't drop. You don't even need a scale to know I'm on top. Me and Mozart, the bars, you got bops. Rich Red and Tiffany, a whole symphony. You a symptom, me, but go off. I will make a masterpiece for you, or at least it's gonna hit like rump, bump, bump. Y'all fit to me like the symphony. Your career's done, done, done.